Hello everyone, we're back and this time we're here to review another exit game, Theft on the Mississippi. All right, hello everyone, I am D, and uh, today yet yeah, we will be talking about Theft on the Mississippi. You are... I am Steamboat Willie. I said it this time, guy. Hey. I didn't. I missed my cue in the video. You teed yeah. me up for the joke, and I missed it. Oh. Not this time. I nailed it. Great job. Best delivery ever. Great job, Will. Okay. Uh, so, uh, no intro for this game to throw to. No That's, rules intro. No rules no. explanation because so the next game. It's next game. It's a puzzle game. If you don't know what these games are, you play through once and done. Yeah, it's like cut up the components, fold them up. It's like an escape room in a box. Yeah. Yeah, it should go without saying if you know what these games are, or if you don't, mm -hmm. that because these games are one and done, they are not replayable, we will uh, likely mention minor spoilers throughout this video that will give away uh, some you know parts of the game. Yeah. So if you haven't played this yet and have come here to find out if you should, just we'll try to warn you ahead of time if we're going to go into more detail. Just yeah. be, keep that in mind that we might have to mention a few puzzles in... Uh, some specifics in order to clarify our points. Yeah. So D. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, again, another thing I should—I just want to point out before we start talking about the game. Uh, when we recorded our playthrough, mm -hmm. it may have been obvious from watching it. Maybe not. I was not feeling great at the time. No. Um, and these games really benefit from the people playing them being sharp, totally focused, and on 100%. their game. Yeah. Uh, I was not, and it, it didn't help. So maybe take my opinions here with a small grain of salt. Yeah. But yeah. I, I always do anyway. You know what I think we should start talking about? What? It's just this game's setup and how much I liked it. The setup? Yeah. In other words, not, not setting it up like the components. I love setting up this game. The, the, the setup of the story. Sure. The story is essentially it's 1872. You are two passengers on this steamboat down, going down the Mississippi River from St. Louis to New Orleans. A man, a Belgian businessman, had his suitcase stolen, and it's our job to deduce who it is. There were eight people in the room. It's mm -hmm. a bar lounge area. There are eight people, other than the bartender, who it cannot be, because he was attending bar, that we need to interview. Mm -hmm. And essentially, every time we ask someone to give, them, to give us their story, they're like, hey, do this task for me. <laughs> and we, yeah, and then we have to go off and do a puzzle, solve the puzzle, come back, and they're like, okay, fine, I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, and uh, so it's it's very similar to the previous exit game we played, uh, Dead Man on the Orient Express. Yes, I know uh, you were tempted to say murder, but that's a book. Yeah, almost identical in setup and what you're supposed to accomplish. Yes, a little different, obviously, in how you accomplish it. So yes, that is the setup. Mm -hmm. So I guess we could start talking about uh, what we liked. And I like that set. I like. I just oh, like well, those yeah. kind of stories. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's an effective story. Yeah, and I, yes, I I agree. Like uh, when it comes to exit games, I enjoy the deduction ones more so than like the escape ones. Or yeah, what get a you. treasure and get out yeah. and before the room fills with smoke or I don't know. Yeah, it's fun. It's all a mystery. It is, uh, and this game does a really good job of immersing you in it immediately by presenting this big poster. Yes, of it's a poster that just. You know, displays the entire lounge bar area, mm -hmm. and there's all these bottles everywhere, and there's a bookshelf and a piano, and then there's all these little individual spots mm -hmm. for for the suspects. And as you're like interviewing them, you're going to be placing them on this board, mm -hmm. this poster, and you know, it really paints a picture. It starts, it gets you like immersed in the story right away. Yeah, it's really good. It's probably maybe my favorite aspect of this game that is specific to this game. I, I don't know, like I don't know if they, other extra games might have had posters, but I, I, we haven't played those and I I really liked it. Yeah. Not only is it is it handy for organizing your thoughts as you get information about the suspects, but as like just as a device for delivering puzzles, I really like it. Cause you know, it's there's so much going on there's so many little details and stuff that you know can be used and you have to always kind of like keep your keep them in the back of your mind at all times like okay wait, wait if there's that thing with the colors or the letters or what have you yeah that was really good I, anything i thought they didn't utilize that enough in the puzzle solving yeah there's maybe i think two puzzles that use it that i can remember like not many two or three yeah yeah and it's like you would expect them to use it more and that would have been yeah, fun there's, there's so much and there's, there's so like, much there detail isn't a ton of other stuff in the game as far no. as like components go but yeah 
It is what it is. And I do like as the game goes on and you're putting everybody in their... You're learning where they were at the mm-hmm. time, so you're putting everyone in their positions, mm-hmm. and you're like... It reminds me of scenes in a movie where, like, a detective, like, you know, tapes a picture or pins a picture to the wall then runs, like, string, you know, and you're like... And so mm-hmm. in your head, you're like a beautiful minding this. You're like... Okay, well, this person was here, yeah. and this person also said they were here. Well, like one of them must yeah. be lying. And like now recreating to... a scene, yeah. you have like people go sit where people were had been sitting, and you kind of like, yeah, it's it's, it's good. It's an effective uh, tool. It, it, it's I it's think. all good, and it, and I, and it sets the table for what you think is going to be a really awesome experience. And you and you're all, off the bat, you're like, I'm ready to get dive into these puzzles. I'm going to find out who took that suitcase. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I, I, when it comes to those puzzles, I, I was. Not a huge fan of this game. <laughs> I would say that when it, there are, what, eight or nine puzzles, and I would say I only enjoyed maybe two or three of them. So yeah, I would there are definitely more th- missed than hit. Like three that I really yeah. liked. Um, it's frustrating because, it, like, like, as, yeah, like, as similar as this is to Orient Express, I, I feel like this game is completely different in terms of how it approaches its puzzles. Yeah. Like that game, I thought they were satisfying. There was a logic to them. This one, it's really reliant heavily on um, uh, like unique components to the game. Mm-hmm. Little cardboard components that they include. You have to manipulate with either by themselves or with other components to solve the puzzles. And I always hate those. <laughs> I really, really don't like those because these games are obviously made on a budget. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're, the quality of, you know, anything that's paper and cardboard, it's only so good. So it can be really frustrating uh, to figure out exactly how you're supposed to use them. Uh, and I think a large reason uh, that they are so frustrating is that the wording in this one, mm-hmm. I think, was the most unclear the like like the game gives you clues as you're playing if you've played any of these or if, even if you haven't like as you're going through the game you're you're drawing more cars from the riddle deck and the riddle deck is going to keep giving you riddles mm-hmm. and clues about what you need to do mm-hmm. normally if you take the time to sit and reason and and you know critically think you'll figure out what you're supposed to do because they're worded well mm-hmm. they're just actually really good riddles in this game i actually a lot of the times they weren't even riddles. They were just like do this, do that, but they weren't written in a way where it's exactly cl- like you kind of know what you need to be doing, but not exactly what yeah. you need to be it's, doing. It's really uh, it's frustrating because yeah. oftentimes then when you're trying to solve these, mm-hmm. uh, you have no idea. Even when you're right, you have no idea if you've done it correctly. If you've done it, yeah, yeah. Cause it, it, like you know, yeah, it often feels like you just made a good guess. Yeah, you lucked into it, even if you didn't, which is really not satisfying. Yeah. Like when I'm right, I want to feel good. I don't mm-hmm. want to feel like oh, I guess so. You know, uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's really uh, it's it's uh, irritating. Um, uh, and you mentioned something after we were finished our recording, which I thought was a good point, which is you know, they made a lot of these games at this point, and I feel like there is probably the they feel a need. To obviously include new puzzles in each new game, yeah, up the ante a little bit. You, you know, they they can't they don't want to recycle stuff because you know people who play these a lot will just you know know what to do immediately. Yeah. So and I, I, it feels like sort of starting to see the strain there where they're trying to like think of new ways to subvert the meta. Almost. Yeah, like yeah. people understand like what the meta is of this game, like what they're what components they're going to try to sneak certain certain yeah. things into. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, and it works sometimes. There are some puzzles in this game that do that, and I think, wow, that's really clever. That's a yeah. really, like, a really neat uh, production choice or something. Yeah. But there's others where it's just like, hey, this is indecipherable almost. It's either indecipherable or just or too finicky. Yeah. yeah, it's there's only so much you can fit into a ten to fifteen dollar game that comes in a box this size. Yeah. They're never going to probably make like an extra large or extra expensive one of these because at the end of the day, it's a one and done. Yeah, you go and play it once, like they can't make them too expensive. It's so they, not worth it. There's only people. so much they can use. They can use the spinner wheel, they can use the instructions, the cards, the book, the few components they have in here, and then the box. Yeah. And that's it. Like, uh, and that works once, twice. It might even work five to six times. But then. When you get up, when you get to a certain point like this, I don't know, this is like mm-hmm. the 12th, 13th one they've done. Yeah. You start to see, yeah, it's like, oh, well, they, I've seen them use this component before, but this time that feels a bit like a stretch. Yeah. And like, you know, it's, it's one of these things like I personally, I, prefer, I, am a, I am someone who prefers logic puzzles, 
word puzzles, maybe math puzzles even, stuff yeah. like that. That I really enjoy. There's one in here where there is a painting, yeah. and you have a riddle that corresponds, and the whole thing is just looking at it yeah. and using critical thinking to figure yeah, out what you're supposed to be seeing. Maybe my favorite puzzle in the game. That one was really good. Yeah, but so like I understand that that would be, those kinds of puzzles are more difficult. Because they're not mm. going to generally be specific to the game. Those are puzzles yeah. that you have to think of and then incorporate them. You know, as opposed to these things with, like, the cardboard bits where you just design the cardboard bit and then you make it fit into the game. Yeah. You know, that makes a lot... That's probably a lot easier for the designers. So I understand why they're kind of leaning on that. But just it's just, you know, the quality of the components does not make those puzzles fun to me, usually. Yeah. It, it, it just didn't feel good. Yeah, and also with a puzzle like that, anything where you're, you're having to, like, manipulate... The components, you, if you mess up, you might risk like destroying the components yeah. in some way where you make it impossible to figure out the proper solution. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that, that sort of stuff, I just, just never works for me. So, but again, this is all, again, when it comes to like, the puzzles in this game, this is all very subjective. Yeah, there are probably people out there who really enjoy these more experimental, like three dimensional sort of puzzles. Cutful, yeah. You move stuff around. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're one of those people, this game might actually be right up your alley. But for me personally, I think for you too, this it's, this one is not so much great in that, in that aspect. Yeah. I like the ones that are more visual yeah. and involve you to think, yes, not so much like the dex like involve dexterity yeah. and te and yeah. But but where that is, I think a subjective thing. I think I do have I do have one objective criticism for this, uh, more objective at least in my opinion, which is that I don't think the actual mystery aspect of this game uh, works very well, especially compared to the previous game we played. Like in Orient Express, it felt absolutely necessary to solve all the puzzles, look at all the information you're given, and then if you do that, you have a chance to come to the correct conclusion. Yeah, to deduce we did that who the murderer was. In our video, you can go watch that if you haven't. It felt great. Uh, yeah, in this game, though, it, it felt too easy. Yeah. I, like, I sort of figured out who the criminal was about halfway through our, our, our playthrough. Yeah, there's one puzzle, yeah, about halfway that kind of gives it, it away. It kind of gives it away. And so at that point, I was like, okay... In real life, we could probably nail this guy. Let's, mm -hmm. But you can't do that in this game. You have to solve every single puzzle because only doing that gives you like the information you need to learn how to end the game. Yeah, which is just so frustrating in a game where your score is based entirely on your time and how many hints you use. Yep. Like our score would have been completely different. We could just call it at that point. There was like one like okay, there's like one like set aside cards. Like when you think you know it. Go here. You can flip this. Yeah, yeah but yeah. no. Instead, you have to do everything, and that's just frustrating. And I understand the designers wanting the players to see everything in the game because it is a one-time deal. I understand they want to do that, and it, it, that does make sense. It's just you know when you're you know can, when your point is to solve a mystery, it's frustrating when you, you yeah just let us solve to it. jump through hoops. Yeah, because if you think about it, if you're on a we're presumably not brought in like we were already on this boat. Yeah, taking a nice vacation on the river. Yeah. And, you know, they bring us in to solve this. If we find, if we solve it in a couple hours, let us go back to sleep and Good. enjoy our vacation. Got like 170 hours. Yeah. <laughs> on the slowest moving riverboat ever. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, other than that, like, visually, I, this game, I think, is on, um, on you know, with, with, like, all the most yeah. average ones. I actually thought Dead Man on the Orient Express looked really cool. And I love the cabin to cabin the aspect. The cabin aspect. Where you had, really where they were kind of sealed, then you yeah. could open them, and then I have a new that cabin, and you... That was really inspired. I just, I liked the way they did the art in that one. It was just really clever and really great. Yeah. The this art, one... You know, the art and the theme's good. It's just, yeah. yeah it, it, it feels a little... It, 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 less care maybe went into this one, or money. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Just so, The game just has less artwork, yeah. so it feels less impressive. It feels like... It feels like this is the Taken 2 to Orient uh, Taken. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we give it the scores? Yeah, if you haven't watched any, one of our reviews before, we use different scoring scales because we find it to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, D uses a out of five star. He does half star ratings as well. Mm -hmm. I do letter grades like you would get on a high school paper. So D... Yeah. What are your um, final thoughts? Like I said, obviously this game, you know, this game's all about the puzzles. And like I said earlier, the puzzles are, you know, what you enjoy is going to be very subjective. It's going to be very personal to you. Personally, for me, I did not enjoy the puzzle solving in this game for the most part, aside from a, you know, a few exceptions. Um, it was more frustrating than fun for the most part. So I can't give this a particularly high score. I'm going to go two and a half stars out of five. 
But I, you know, I'm still, I, I still like these games a lot. I will still gladly play extra games in the future. But if you're, yeah. if you're looking, if you haven't played either, and you're looking between Orient Express and this one, which are very similar in some ways, I would go with Orient Express for sure. You know, if you're looking to complete the set of exit games, or if you just like these kind of mysteries, so it's less of an exit room, I'd still recommend this. Uh, but for me, per, and because I personally did like the story, even if there were some like ho- like moments in the story that didn't quite work. But yeah, I, I'm with you. The puzzles were more often too frustrating. And when it says three out of five, you get it in your head that you know it's a medium difficulty yeah, I was a little game. Surprised by that. And yet this one gave us more trouble than Dead Man on the Orient Express, which I think had a three and a half or four out of five difficulty rating. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, um, I'm going to give this game a C. It just wasn't satisfying in the way these games can be. Yeah, but like the I like the exit games a lot, and I am willing yeah. to play more, and I look forward to playing the next one. Yeah, but until right. then, thanks for watching. Yeah, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave any comments you have on our review or this game if you've played it yourself. Maybe you agree or disagree with us. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel, which is always great, uh, and you get more videos like this every week. Social media is down below, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you want to follow us on any of those uh, platforms, just click on the description and uh, come back later in the week. We're doing another review. Yes. Yes. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, we did a review of the Alpha, a game by Bicycle that they uh, kindly sent to us. We were sent a second game by them as well, and we're going to do another one of those kind of larger, thorough reviews of that game this week in lieu of our normal playthrough. But that should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I am as well. So, I think it's going to do it, Will. Yeah. I'm sorry, I checked out for a second. Thanks for watching, everybody. (laughs) I'm kidding. Till next time. I exited. Uh, Bye. Bye.